Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please let me know if you have any problem from your side to hear me. Uh, today our topic is about if uh, the Quran have, uh, if it is a book of confusion or not. Uh, somebody sent me an article <clears throat> and this article says, confused by the Quran, so was I. And supposedly this is a story of somebody who converted to Islam and obviously she is a woman and she claimed <clears throat> uh, that the Quran in the beginning was a little bit confusing for her but after after a while the Quran became so clear and she said and I'm going to quote what she said in this article I'm, you know I don't trust article written Muslim website because they fabricate a lot of articles it's not even exist even the people are not exist I was raised by deeply religious Catholic mother I noticed that most of people who they say they converted to Islam they are Catholic now I assure you that when you hear the word Catholic it's mean it is a lie uh, the Muslims they have something it's called the obsession with the Catholic because they believe the Catholic are the enemies of Islam and when they say that a Catholic converted to Islam is like saying uh, God became a Muslim It's like you are destroying Christianity. I mean like even the Catholic. I mean you believe it This is why you see always the Muslim speaking about somebody is a Catholic imagine brother a Catholic he converted to Islam So I was raised by a deeply religious Catholic mother who put me through nine years of Catholic school and etc blah blah blah, okay, I stood knelt I set my way through the church every single Sunday and often a Friday so I let the beginning of my journey as a Muslim I was for uh, more familiar with the, the Bible than the Quran <clears throat> not so much all right today not so much uh, you can read I mean let me make the text bigger just to save ourselves uh, from wasting the time uh, <clears throat> all right we make it bigger now all right now let us see what make this uh, uh, previously Catholic as she claimed to be a Muslim you see I'm going to read the reasons for you and you will see how silly and how stupid what those people are writing in their articles which is proven to us that it is absolutely false uh, you will see here uh, let us say let us go back <clears throat> I have always found the Bible confusing. It does not have any uh, recognizable uh, plot point or even timeline. Are you sure? <laughs> I remember the one is talking is comparing about what? Comparing between the Bible and the and the and the Quran. You know. <clears throat> You see, if we want to go right now and find where the creation happened, we will find it in the book of Genesis, which is in the beginning of the Bible. So the Bible is coming with the time of line, you idiot. What are you talking about? I do not need to look which books. I know exactly which book speaking about the creation, what happened, etc. The names, the, the children, even the Bible is giving you the names of the names of the names of the names of the children of Adam one by one. Where I can find those in the, in the Quran? I mean, when people, they make articles, obviously, which is a false article, it's very easy to get them busted. If I go right now and try to find where is the creation versus in the Quran, I will find it scattered, scattered all over the Quran. Which, which chapter is the chapter of the creation of the Quran? Where I can find the creation? Hmm. I will, as an example, <clears throat> If I type here, it is a switch to Arabic. Uh, I just uh, I type the word six in the in the search engine, all right. And now. It is Allah, in, it, is, it is your Lord who created for you the, the, the sky and the earth in six days. Okay, this is which chapter? 
chapter 7 verse number 54 but what the chapter 7 verse number 54 have with to do to do with the rest with the chapter let us click at it i will go back and i will show you in english what this verse before it and you can open the quran yourself huh? And the verse before it, and the verse before it, and the verse before it, and the verse before it have to do with the creation of the earth and the six days of creation. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Let us go to the English. All right. Your Lord is the one who created the earth and the day, etc. Blah, 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 blah. You know, in six days. All right. So here the creation. This is the first time the Quran is speaking about the six day creation in the Quran. Okay. What the verse before it have to do with the verse after it? Nothing. What the verse before it have to do with the verse after it? Nothing. What the verse before it have to do with the verse after it? Nothing. So what do you mean timeline? I go right now to the book of Genesis and you will see everything have a timeline. Let us give a different example, not about the creation. <clears throat> when the Quran count the names of the prophets of God, which names the Quran stole anyway from our Bible? Let us go down just to give you an example of the madness. Okay. Oh, Lord have mercy. I mean, sometimes stupidity is, is amazing. All those verses in the front of us, they are verses speaking about prophets of God. You see all of them but i want to give you an example how how this quran work oh let us do this hold on <clears throat> all right All those verses, you can stop, you can you can pause the video, and you will see that all of them they have. But I want to show you some example uh, example verses, or, or example about those verses. How stupid the Quran is. Uh, let us see here. Let us go to page number two. Uh, look like all right <clears throat> look look this website is not helping me let us go by by the verses then <clears throat> Let us take this for this one first. If we take this one first here, chapter six, verse number eighty-four. By the way, all the other verses I'm not uh, avoiding them, but all of the all all of them. But I'm 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 trying to show you how the things is messed up. Chapter six, verse number eighty-four. And as you see, this is the Muslim translation. We gave him Isaac and Jacob, all the three guided. Okay, hold on. Uh, uh, who is talking here Allah about who about Abraham what is Ishmael I mean when I speak about timeline shouldn't I speak about the timeline isn't it Ishmael is the elder in the in the family between his brothers so what do you mean we gave him Isaac and Jacob 
Well, what does that mean? What is what is the guy who is the older and or you know in the Middle Eastern tradition, the the oldest in the family actually he is the most important person. So why Allah here he dropped the name of Ishmael? The answer is very simple. At this point, Muhammad was being hypocrite to the Jews, and he knew that the Jews don't like to mention Ishmael a lot because he's not important for them. He is not their grandfather. As simple as that. So Muhammad is being a hypocrite to the Jews. So now he want to mention to the Jews what is important to the Jews because he was trying to convince the Jews that he's a Jew. But when the Jews did not agree, then Muhammad, he don't care no more. So here you will see that we gave him Isaac and Jacob. Three, all three are guided, which means Abraham and Jacob and Isaac are, okay, what about Ishmael? This verse, this verse, According to Muslim, Ishmael is a prophet too. And he is the one who built the Kaaba with, with Abraham. Let us say rebuild the Kaaba because supposedly the one who built the Kaaba first time, it was uh, Adam and his wife Eve. So, and then before him, we guided Noah. So between Abraham and Noah, there is nobody. That's it before Abraham, Noah. Okay. And and among his brogni, David and Solomon. Like what? And Job and Joseph and Moses and Aaron. Okay, hold on. Who is who is older? Aaron, Moses, jo who's Joseph? And if we ask the Muslims now, who is David? Who is Solomon? Who is Job? They don't know. They have no idea. What in the Quran it says what, what, what who is Job? Like here it says Jacob. Okay. Okay, Jacob and Isaac supposedly according to the verse here they are they, according to the verse here they are the children of Abraham now please introduce to me David and Solomon and Job and Joseph and Moses and Aaron and are they coming in order is Aaron after Moses and Moses after Joseph and Joseph after Job and Job after Solomon and Solomon after David, etc. So, where is the order we are talking about? So, when somebody speak to us that in in the in the and then he jump and Zachariah and John and Jesus and Elias, like what Elias have to do with with Jesus now? Jesus and Elias. I mean, what 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 is the place of Elias here? And what is the connection between all of those and what is before and what is after? Nothing. What? Why those names are listed there? Nobody knows. If you go in the Bible, you will find the names, the children, what they did, the, 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 even the wives, even what they do in their life, what they speak, even private conversation. I mean, it's a, it is coming in a great details. Here there's nothing. It's a guy trying to make a rabbi music, making a song, you know, and we give him Jacob and we give him Isaac and we give him etc. And then at the end, he have to add a word which fit with that with the tone. So he add whatever and that make the, 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 the meaning is lousy because there's no meaning. There's no meaning of those verses. And the same can goes for all other verses in the Quran. There is no meaning. Chapter 11, verse number 71. Read the chapter, Surah Hud. What Surah Hud? Who is Hud? And if we want to read about Abraham, which chapter is going to be the one speaking about Abraham? The story is all over the Quran, scattered all over. Which chapter we will read about Jesus? Is it chapter 19? Okay, we are in chapter 19 right now, verse number 49, but the verse is not speaking about Jesus. But this is supposedly the chapter of Mary. Okay, chapter of Mary. What does this have to do with Isaac and Jacob? Nothing. What is the connection? Is that the timeline? No. And you know, when you write a book and you don't have a timeline, that will create a confusion. Why you are inserting the name of Jacob and you know like there is a, like are you referring to a, a prophecy that will be acceptable then, but there is nothing here just mission names for no reason. When he turned away from them 
and the, uh, from those whom they worship beside Allah. We bestowed on him Isaac and Jacob. But this is in the in the chapter which is about Jesus. Okay, what does this have to do with Jesus then? And didn't you mention already about Abraham in different story? If we go and search about Abraham in different story or different uh, verses, we will find the following. As just as an example, just to show you the madness of this book. The story of Abraham appear in tons of places in the Quran, but we will find that there's no connection of all those stories about Abraham. It's like Abraham in every chapter is different person. As an example here, chapter 6, verse number 17, 78. But remember, we just heard the story of Abraham in chapter 19, verse number 49. And it's a different story. Here, you will see that Abraham is a guy who worship the moons, the stars, the sun, uh, the, the, the planet, and he worshiped them and he called them Akbar. Abraham is an idol worshiper and he is a pagan, according to the Quran. And then he said, <clears throat> when the night covered him over, he saw the star. Remember, he's talking about, we show Abraham the power of the laws. What Abraham, what, what show him the power of the laws? How you showed him? Where is the story of showing Abraham? How you showed Abraham? Nobody knows. What is the conversation between Allah and Abraham? The, when you showed him, how you showed him? We don't know. Did, did he send Jibreel? Where is Jibreel? Why the story of Jibreel appear only to explain to Muhammad, but Abraham is not? Where is Jibreel here? We showed him the power and the laws. Okay, what law? How you showed him? We do not know. Of the heavens and the earth. So Abraham was given the law of the heaven and the earth. What is what is the law of Abraham? I want somebody, I want a Muslim to introduce that to me. Any Muslim can introduce us a book. It's called the book of Abraham, which is contain all the law of earth and heaven. Is that the Torah? That's madness. Then he continued, that he might understanding have etc. And look how, how Abraham instead, how he understood things. When the night covered him over, he saw a star. He said, this is my Lord. And Abraham worshiping his stars. And, but when it said, he said, I have not, I love not those who said. <laughs> I mean, look at the logic and look at the timeline. So Abraham, he saw a light in the star, in the in the in the sky, and obviously it's a star. So he said, "This is my Lord. This is uh, this is God." He worshipped the star. The morning come, the star is gone. So he said, "I don't like those who disappear." I mean, this is silly and this is stupid, because you are telling me as if Abraham he never know and he never saw that the stars disappear at night. Where is the timeline? How how this happened? For how long Abraham was worshiping star? Is that one night? Is it one year? Is it one century? What is that? Nothing. Then he continued. Then when he saw the moon rising in splendor, he said, this is my Lord. Okay, so now Abraham, he moved from worshiping his stars huh, to worship the moon. Good for you, Abraham. But when the moon said, he said, unless my Lord guide me, I shall surely be among those who go astray. <laughs> look, how, look how stupid this verse is. How you are worshiping the moon, and then you decide not to worship the moon, and then you are asking your Lord to guide you. Who is your Lord? I mean, this is stupid. My, 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 unless my Lord guide me, but now you are, you left, you left the moon worshiping, you left the star worshiping. Now he jumped to the front Lord. Look at the verse after it. When he saw the sun rising in splendor, he said, this is my Lord, this is the greatest. The fact this it doesn't say that. He said, this is my Lord, this is Akbar. The Muslim falsely translate the word Akbar as the greatest. The fact it is about size. Akbar. Akbar size and, and, and power and etc. The, the, the sun is powerful. So this is Akbar. The value is Akbar. The, the, the power is Akbar. The... the Everything about it is Akbar. So now we start worshiping the sun. Okay, but how this happened? And why Abraham jumping from worshiping star after star after? What is the difference between worshiping a star and the sun? Nothing. I mean, isn't it this is a sun? Is, isn't it this is a star too? That's stupid. 
look like Allah do not know that this is a star anyway so he jumped from worshiping star to worshiping star but the, the he left the first star because the first star disappeared okay don't Abraham he never noticed that the Sun already disappearing at night so why he is doing the same mistake again but when the Sun said he said oh my people I am indeed free from your guilt okay so what what made him leave this cult worship in the Sun because the Sun said okay this is this is madness you know already the Sun said aren't you a man like is Abraham at this day he is first day in life he is a one day old baby and he just noticed that the sun said so when somebody speak about that Quran have a timeline and confusion is a free it's a, this is stupid this is madness is garbage the one who provides us the book it's called the Quran where we can find his story in the Quran there's a chapter in the Quran it's called Muhammad okay who is Muhammad I challenge any Muslim to tell me who is Muhammad from the Quran. Not a single verse in the Quran tell us who is this guy. Do you believe it? All what we know that he is a prophet and all the prophets before him die, which is a contradiction for the verse in the Quran speaking about Jesus was not killed and he's alive. Allah took him to heaven. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ الرَّسُولٌ the first time the name of Muhammad mentioned in the Quran is in chapter 3 verse number 144 but remember chapter 3 in the Quran is not chapter 3 as you know the Muslim they change the location of the verses and here we go again to different madness when we speak about timeline which is not exist in the Quran and then we find that even the Quran they have today Muslims don't have the original Quran they have in order of what it's called the shorter first the longer first, the, sorry, the shorter than the longest, and then the shorter than the longest, whatever. I mean, it's a madness. There is no order. The, the Quran is not written according to Revelation, according to Muhammad claim. If we go to the Revelation, we will find that Revelation have nothing to do with the order anyway. If I search right now, uh, you can go, you know, save me from doing this. You can go search for Quran according to Revelation. You will see that the Quran according to Revelation have nothing to do with anything. But anyway, the chapter of Muhammad, if we try to find who is Muhammad, where we can find who is Muhammad? Nowhere. Those are the verses mentioned in the name of Muhammad. Four verses. Four verses. Be my witness. Huh? You can search any word too. Here we go. All right. Four verses. But none of those four verses says who is Muhammad. So where is the timeline? Allah have time to tell us about the end speaking to Solomon and what we will get the benefit of this end. About the bird and Solomon having a conversation about the woman, she have no hair in her legs. But who is Muhammad? We are talking about the one who brought the message of Islam to all Muslims. But there is nowhere in the Quran speaking about who, who is he, who is his father. You know, I remember there's a guy, his name uh, Abdullah Green, and he is a convert. He's an African American, uh, or um, I don't know, maybe African from England. Uh, you know, from England. He said the Bible written according to John. John who? Uh, go we, in the oh, open the edit, open the first book of John. You will see John who. What are you talking about? We know John who. We know Luke who. We know what they do for a living. We know the name of their parents. What are you talking about? I want to ask you now in the Quran. If we open the Quran, the Quran is written according to who? Actually, I made the uh, I made a post. One of you. Uh, he asked me uh, about something about uh, the Quran uh, was uh, according to who? Let me see. If I can find this uh, thing here, uh, maybe in the image. Let us see image post. Here we go. You see here in the image, you will see the Quran says this is an image from the Quran as it is. Kutiba had al Mushaf. Let us make it big. All right, that's better. Kutiba has al Mushaf. 
وضبط على ما يوافق رواية حفص. This مصحف written according حفص بن سليمان the son of Suleiman the son of المغيرة الأسدي الكوفي according to the reading. Look look the Quran until now they are not talking about Quran as written book they are calling about recitation. The Quran this Quran this actually it's not even called Quran it's called Mushaf Mushaf it's mean pages. It's not even a book. So those Mushaf, these pages, written according to the recitation of Hafs. According to the, the recitation of Asim. According to recitation, etc., etc., blah, 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 according to Uthman, according to Ali, according to Zaid, according, uh, uh, according, according to Muhammad. But none of those, they have a book for them, including Hafs. Who is Hafs? We search about Hafs, we find that Hafs is a fraud. And he was rejected by Muslims for any recitation or any hadith he mentioned. Asim is the same, is a fraud according to Muslims, not according to me. I made, I made videos about it. And we have debate about it. If you remember, we, we have a debate in the Titan uh, uh, show. Uh, the Titan show they brought me like five Muslims to debate me and none of them was able to answer It says in their website the Muslim website that Hafs is a fraud So the Muslim today they have the Quran according to Hafs and Hafs is a thief and a fraud according to Muslims and Any report about the, the Prophet of Islam from Hafs is rejected automatically His hadith is not even a week. No, it's rejected totally rejected because he's a fraud So what is what is the Quran of the Muslims? I mean, what the, according to what the Quran we have today? When somebody says to me, the Quran today makes sense for me, makes sense to me to you to you about what? Muhammad did not give you the Quran. What is the first verse Muhammad he received from Allah? The Muslim they say to you, Al Qalam. Okay, where is we can find Al Qalam? Al Qalam today is at the end of the Quran. At the end of the Quran. Chapter 96. But this is verse number one, supposedly. How verse number one, chapter number one, became 96? And you are telling me about the Quran is written in order, not like the Bible? That's stupid. That's not only a lie, it is a stupid lie. Any one of you right now can go and open any chapter in the Bible and you will see how the names of the children of Noah and their children and the children of the children. I mean, you cannot find any book in the world can give you details as much as these details. In the whole Quran, I cannot find even the father of Muhammad's name, his mother's name. Who is he? There is nothing. As an example, where is Muhammad coming from? If there is any verse in the Quran speaking about Muhammad is born where? Let us try. I mean, I'm going to give it a try. I will type the word Mecca. And in different verse, I will type the word Bekka. Okay. The first house Allah he built, it was the house of Bekka. Chapter 3, verse number 96. Do you see it? Bakka. Okay. The Muslims today, they worship a house. It exists in a city called Mecca. And this is can be found in chapter 48, verse number 24. Until now, no Muslims can tell us what is Bakka and what is Mecca. The fact, I can tell easy. Both of them is a copy of the name of the temple of Al Makkah. Bakka and Mecca, the, 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 the word as an Arabic word, mean like the place where there's no uh, there's no water, as simple as that. And this alone is enough for us to prove that this is a stupid statement to say that Abraham he built a house there. It is the house of Allah. And in the same time, if we try to find what is Mecca and who is who is the one who built Mecca, Muslims they have tons of stories about building Mecca. 
some story says it was built by the angels some story says by Adam and Eve Adam he dig Eve, if she cleaned the dirt I mean this is what it says I can show you tons of reference the Quran speak about Adam sorry about Abraham and Ishmael never mentioned Adam he built in the Mecca. so there is tons of contradiction in the stories of Muhammadan but, but Muslims don't complain you know why because they used to it so now if we try to find out who where is Mecca and what is Mecca and what is Bakka? Where we will we will find the reference of Bakka. If you want to say to me that this is can be found in historian books, well, this is mean your book is short of information, then you need to why I need to go and find the historian books when Allah approved no historian. According to Muslims, that this is a perfect book. According to the Quran, according to Allah, you do not need other book. If we go in the Quran, it says. Read with me carefully. All those verses about the religion of Islam, but this verse here is very funny and the most stupid verse I found it in the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 3. This verse says and claim, this day, read with me carefully. Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, okay, this day I have I perfected your religion. I have uh, I have I've perfected your religion for you completed my favor upon you and Chosen for you Islam as religion. Okay When Allah he says he perfected the religion and this is in a verse in the Quran and Then you tell me in order to understand in the verse in the Quran. We have to go and read the hadith as an example or we have to go and read a book of Ibn Kathir or we have to go and read the book of Fajalalain so what is the perfection and the same time if we read Ibn Kathir or Ajalalain are we going to get answers no like uh, let me give an example you know the madness of the Quran is beyond imagination Read with me carefully. Noon. Well, wa ma Okay, I want a Muslim to explain to me what this letter mean. A letter in the beginning of the Quran. Every Muslim he give you different meaning. And not only that, sometimes even the same scholars give you ten meaning for the same thing. I will give. You, I will show you. Chapter sixty-eight, verse number one. If you read with me here, it says, and from the narration and his authority, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad. He said regarding the interpretation of Allah saying noon. Noon, he says, Allah swear by noon, which is a whale and that carries the earth in its back and while it's in water and beneath which is a ball and under the ball is a rock and under the rock there is a dust and none knows what is under the dust save Allah. Thank you very much. I mean, this is knowledge. It's a whale carrying the earth and you are telling me the Quran makes sense and it's not a book of confusion How I'm going to know now uh, I'm sure a Muslim right now. He will say to me. There's no way it mean that But this is what your scholar saying not only that this is the cousin of Muhammad which Muhammad He prayed to Allah to make him the scholar of the nation. You see Muhammad did not pray for Ibn Kathir to be a scholar He did not pray for Jalalain. He prayed for Ibn Abbas his cousin and don't tell me Allah did not answer his prayer. That would be a shame. Because according to tons of hadith, that Muhammad is the only intercession or intercede, the person who would intercede and Allah accept his intercession. If you say he don't accept his intercession, you are in trouble. So he prayed to Ibn Abbas to make him the, 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 the scholar of the nation. Ibn Abbas now is giving us the meaning of noon. Then Ibn Abbas did not even stop here about the whale carrying the earth. He continued, the name of the whale is the wish, and this is not the wish for a Khan for sure. And it is said, the name of Lata, uh, the name is Lataya. It says, who says that? I mean, what this? 
it and, and some they say that the name of the bull is Bahamut. Go and search Bahamut. Bahamut is one of the legions of the Arab about a bull. And some they say it is Talahut or Liwana. The whale is in the sea called Adwad. Like what? A second ago, you gave us different name for the whale. It was it was Lewish. Now it's it is a what? Adwad. <laughs> and it it's like a small bull in a huge sea. The sea is in a holy a lowered rope. And whereby there is four thousand cracks, and from each crack water spring go out of the earth. It's also say this is remember this is this is a book. Have no confusion. Remember, remember that. It's also said. What do you mean? It's also said. If this is a scholar of the nation of Islam, he's saying it's also said. It's also said. Look how many meaning he give us for a letter. If a letter have all those meaning, what about a verse? It's also said that noon is one of the names of the Lord. Like what the heck? The noon is one of the name of the Lord. How this can happen? Since when? Ah, because a Rahman is one of the letters of his name. So why Allah choose this letter out of all the letters? I mean, this is stupid. You can tell desperately they are trying to find the meaning for it. And the reason for this confusion, because Muhammad is a thief. He stole this is from the book of Waraq ibn Nawfal, but he do not know what it does mean. This is why he bring thing he throw at them, and he don't explain why the Muslim did not ask Muhammad in his lifetime what noon mean. Because it's not important. Who care? I mean, this idiot. He say whatever he say. We want to make him a prophet. They are a bunch of criminals, outlaw people, and they are. You know, um, they are savage. They are not really, they don't care for, they're not, they are not educated. They don't care. This is why if you read the hadith and the stories, you will find that all of them, they have, they are full of lies. They don't take a, a, a shower for maybe a year or two or, or so. So here, they, they keep talking about maybe, and then look here, here. And it's also said that noon is inkwell, look like what? From a whale to the name of Allah, to an inkwell, to a bull, to a Bahamut. And now it became an inkwell. And it's also said that noon is an inkwell by the pen. Allah, he swore by the pen. Why Allah swore by the pen? I mean, this is stupid. This pen is made of light and its height is equal to the distance between the heaven and the earth. And why the pen is so big? <laughs> Yeah, my, my brother, the pen is big because Allah is Akbar. Akbar means bigger. Do you want Akbar to have a small pen? Are you crazy? I mean, how mad, how stupid this madness is. And you are telling me that this book is not a book of confusion. It is with this pen that the wise remembrance, i.e., uh, the God tablet, Allah have a tablet. I mean, uh, Islam is not a confusion religion. Allah have a God tablet. Why? I challenge any Abdul to tell me why in the world Allah have a tablet. By the way, is it Samsung? Is it Huawei? Is it uh, Apple? Allah have a tablet? Why? You see, if Allah he wrote a tablet and he gave it to Muhammad, I will understand. You know, he writes something to Muhammad. Muhammad is a human. But he write it, he, he wrote a tablet by a pen made from light for himself. Why? And this tablet is guarded between the eyes of the angel Israfil. I mean, should I say anything? And you are telling me that what I learned from all of this now, I'm reading for the last 20 minutes about one letter. What I learned from it? Nothing. What the point? Nothing. What this is about? Nothing. What is noon? After all this reading, did I get the answer about what is noon? No. Because it's all all is about it being said, it being said. Oh, we can do the same for tons of verses in the Quran. What about this verse as an example? Qaf wal Quran al Majid. Qaf wal Quran al Majid. Okay, what Qaf is? Who wanna tell me what Qaf? What is that? Kaf God knows best what he means by this letter. Like, what the heck? <laughs> I 
this is agility lane. let us change maybe different uh, scholar he have an answer look at this guy look at this idiot and from his narration the authority of ibn abbas that he said the interpretation of allah saying khaf khaf is a letter by the way in case you do not know but in arabic when we read the letter by itself we read it as a as a word so khaf is a letter he says Qaf is an azure mountain overlooking this world and the color of the sky takes from it. Allah swear by it. Okay. Now we learn something that there's a mountain surrounding the earth. It's called Qaf. Don't tell me the book is the book of confusion. There's no confusion here. It's clear. There's a mountain around the earth and the sky is taking the color from it. What's wrong with you? If this is an explanation for a book, I mean, I will be stupid to believe in what is written there and to understand, I mean, this is madness. How I can, what I understand from this. Allah, he says, Qaf al Quran al Majid. What does that mean? Allah swear by Qaf and he swear by the Quran. Okay, what is Qaf? They don't know. And why he swear by Qaf? Or what about Allah swear by the fig? Here we go. Atinu wa Zaytun, chapter 95, verse number one. Allah swear by the the but by the by the fig and the olive. Why is that? Madness, stupidity. What a tino was they doing? What this guy is talking about? By the fig and the olive, and the mount of Sinai. What does that mean? And this city of security. What does that mean? What city? We have indeed created man in the best mold. Okay, what, what the olive and the fig and the Mount of Sinai and the secure city have to do with the creation of the man? What is the connection? No, there's no connection. All this chapter is eight verses, but not the, none of them make sense. The same about the chapter about, you know, the Al-Qalam. Like if you go to Al-Qalam as an example, The first one Muhammad you receive Al Qalam. What is the meaning of this verse? Read with me carefully. Read and love. Chapter ninety six, verse number four. Proclaim or read. <laughs> So the confusion started from the first word. Why? For a very simple reason, because the word Iqra, it's mean reading something is written. But the Muslims, as they believe, Muhammad, he was not given a paper to read. So how the Quran says read? So now to fix this issue, to make you more confused, they say, proclaim or read. <laughs> but it cannot be both. Because read have different meaning from proclaim. And how he can proclaim and he say, I cannot proclaim. I mean, this is stupid. If you read the story about Muhammad, the angel, he said to him, read. Muhammad, he said, I cannot read. According to the Muslims. So how he, I mean, if it, it is proclaim, he should say, I cannot proclaim. But the second you say, I, I cannot proclaim, you just say the proclaim and you did. I mean, it doesn't make sense. So read in the name of your Lord, created the man out of, of congealed blood. I mean, this is stupid. The man is created from congealed blood, dead blood. Since when? Who is the stupid doctor who says so and agree? We are created from dead blood. And then he says, and he who taught by the use of the pen, Allah is the one who taught the use of the pen. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Abdul, are you sure that Allah is the first one who created the pen? Are you sure? Yes, brother. It says in the hadith. So why you Muslims don't have pens? As I know, it's not you who made the pen. Go and read the history right now. Type in Google who is the first one who created the pen. What's wrong with you? And if Allah He taught a human being the use of pen, how come He did not taught Muhammad? You see, remember, 
he here is speaking to Muhammad and he is telling Muhammad that Allah he taught by the pen but Muhammad according to Muslim do not know how to write how to read I mean we did not even read anything this is the first message message Muhammad received and it's full of confusion and after reading all those that this verse chapter what we learn nothing nothing what what this chapter is teaching nothing I remember here the Quran is speaking about a lion for a forelock we will drag him from the forelock a lion sinful forelock the Muslim they say scientists they discover that the first side of the brain is where a human being he lie and this is how Allah he knew that you stupid Abdul what's wrong with you Allah here is speaking about the hair the hair not the brain do you see what do you know what forelock mean unbelievable <laughs> anyway so the Quran is a book of confusion and not me saying that even Allah himself he witnessed to this if you go here you will see how Allah himself he says that this is a book have a great confusion Okay, what does that mean? It is him who sent the book to you in a clear verses and some verses who no one knows they are confusing, they are feel silly, they are stupid, nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. Am I exaggerating in translation? No, read it. Read it. And according to the Quran. Those who seek illness, they will take those verses and use them. Okay, why you are making their meaning hiding? I mean, what the point of sending us verses and the verses nobody knows what they mean? Say, Allah, what the point? Nothing. And you know, and he's saying here, and those who have illness in their heart, they are going to use them for their own purpose. The purpose of this verse, Muhammad, you do not know how to explain those verses. So he said, okay, well, there's many, there's verses in the Quran are very clear. And there's many verses in the Quran. Nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. Nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. Which means all the interpretation in the Quran, or for it, let us say, all the interpretation made by Muslims about the Quran make no sense. Because here we go, the Quran, the Quran itself saying to us, nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. But no one knows it's hiding meaning except Allah. So now what we will do? We will call Allah asking for the real meaning. What is the logic and what is the science behind this logic? That we are going to have a book. Nobody knows what it means save Allah. That's amazing. Must be astonishing too. And where is this verse? This is in the beginning of the Quran. In the beginning of the Quran, it says that nobody knows what this what 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 this verse means. Save Allah. Oh, sorry, not not this verse. Many verses in the Quran. May, well, nobody knows. Actually, I challenge any Muslim to explain to me any verse in the Quran. As an example, if we take the Quran from the first first verse, first verse ever written in the Quran, in the Quran we have in our hand today. It's called Al Fatiha. Right away, the confusion start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. How in the world Allah is talking? He say in the name of Allah, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Who is talking? Have you ever imagined I start talking to you? I say in the name of Christian Prince. That's stupid. If you ask the Muslim, they will say to you, "This is a prayer." Where it says this is prayer? You see, they came to Jesus. They said to him, "How to pray?" He said, "Pray like this: Our Father out of heaven." You know the rest. Where in here it says this is how to pray. There's no introduction. Suddenly, Allah saying, In the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, who are you? Praise be to Allah. Allah saying, Praise be to Allah. That's stupid. Then he says, He repeat again, saying the same exact sentence again. Look, 
the most courageous, most merciful. Again, most courageous, most merciful. I mean, obviously, he doesn't have anything to say. He's out of words. Master of judgment day. What does that mean? The do we worship and thin we uh, uh, aid we we see we seek. Allah saying that. Allah saying the do we worship and thin aid we seek. That's stupid. Show us the straight way. Obviously, Muhammad here he was trying to copy the prayer of Jesus, which he taught to his apostles, "Our Father art of heaven." As simple as that. The Christian they have a prayer. It's called "Our Father art of heaven." Muhammad he need a prayer, and this this is why you see this is are inserted in the beginning of the Quran. It was inserted violently. Otherwise, it have no place here. What is this? Is that the first Muhammad verse received? The Muslim themselves they agree no. So why it's here? So they don't have a prayer like the Christian, and we need a prayer like the Christian. So what we do? We make a prayer like the Christians. If you read the last two verses in this chapter here, you will find that this is very much in match with our Father out of heaven. The thief Muhammad, he needed just to change some words and make it look like it's something new. Thief. He steal your bicycle, he changed the color. But it's the same. Changing the color will not make a difference. What is what is the chapter in the Quran makes sense? Nothing. Actually, even the Quran, I'm not going to mention how many contradictions in the Quran. You can go. Go to Amazon.com, search for my books, type Christian Prince. I have a list of books, and you will find tons of contradictions in this book. How many days Allah created? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's one of the Abdul, he posted in the text, in the video last two days ago. He said, the Bible speaks about creation of the earth in six days. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Which is equal to six thousand years. <laughs> you know, people remind me uh, if you go in YouTube, uh, like you remember this guy, his name don't convert to Islam, right? He was a Muslim for some time and then he left Islam. You call him brother Ishmael, I think. This guy he converted to Islam when he was sixteen years old, as I remember. And he was preaching and trying to convert as many as he can of people to Islam. And then when he became a man, became mature, he noticed that he was a stupid, literally. Especially after he learned how to read Arabic. And this is why I encourage people to learn the language of the devil. You see, this is my language. I'm not, I'm not saying Arabic is the language of the devil, but I'm here in this point. The Quran is the book of the devil, and if you want really to fight it, you need to learn the language of the devil. This guy he discovered that this this is the book of the devil, but took him a journey almost of fifteen years, if not more. A lot of time, and he uh, get baptized. But here you will notice that this guy if you watch his videos when he was a Muslim and then when he left Islam and now he is fighting Islam how confused he was everything he was saying before is a total contradiction for what he is saying today but what is the reason are you telling me that this guy when he was not knowing Arabic he is not or let us say he was more educated and more knowledgeable about Islam from a person who spent 16 years as a Muslim and learn Arabic which is today now and he became a Christian no way you know what I mean so what happened to him what happened is very simple the confusion is gone in the beginning of his lifetime he was a kid he was teenage he's surrounded by Muslims they told him the Quran teach there's only one God so what if there's one God there's a church in, in San Francisco they worship the devil and they believe he's the only God the old Egyptian believe in one God the Sabi and they believe in one God there's tons of religion believe in one God so and you know the idea of having one God or 20 gods, what is the what, what is the point? Stupid. Because Christians believe in one God, 
Trinity is not about many gods. Trinity is about one God. The Jews believe in one God. So, but let us say for the sake of argument, the Hindus, their religion is true. Huh? And they have, let us say, a million gods. So, if there's a million God, there's a million God. What we can do about it? So speaking about like Islam is the only religion teach the monotheism, this is a big fat lie. There's no monotheism in Islam. Islam worship a God, they don't know, and a man, they don't even know his name is Muhammad. Who is Allah, they don't know. What Allah means, they don't know. Who is Muhammad, they don't know. All what they knew that some Muslims written about Muhammad, that he is a son of a man, his name is Abdullah, which is impossible. Because if Muhammad's father was a pagan, he don't believe in Allah, how his name is Abdullah. Abdullah means the slave of Allah. Literally, the black slave of Allah. The word the Abid, always in Arabic, is about two words in the same time. You are black and you are a slave. As simple as that. So those who they are religious, to humiliate themselves in front of God, they call themselves Abd, which means in front of Allah, I am as if I am a black and a slave, which is a racist statement because you are saying that I am the lowest of the lowest. But this is from the Arabic tradition. It's not only about Islam, it's about before Islam. And Muhammad's father, his name is Abdullah. That is impossible. How his name is the slave of Allah, but yet you don't believe in Allah. What happened that the Muslims, they changed the name of Muhammad's father from Abdullah to Abdullah. Abdullah makes sense. All the uncles of Muhammad, they are their names, is Abdullah, Abdul Manaf, Abdul Uz, all the, the, all the idols around the Kaaba. None of them is Allah. How come Muhammad's father, his name is Abdullah, but yet you don't believe in Allah? So, all the history of Muhammad is unknown. Who is Muhammad? We don't know. There's books written. Look, you see, if you if you go and read the Muslim, they say to you, we learn about Muhammad from the Sahih, from Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir is a person came hundreds of years after Muhammad. How you learn about Muhammad from Ibn Kathir? What about Sahih Bukhari? How many years Sahih Bukhari after Muhammad? How you can learn learn about a man? From somebody it came more than two between 250 300 years after Sahih Bukhari, Al Muslim, Al Turmuzi, all those names came long after Muhammad. So, how we will learn about Muhammad from them? And who is Muhammad? And why the Quran to tell us was how come the Quran have time to tell us that Abraham have sons and their name is Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob, but he don't tell us who is Muhammad. And how come the Quran sometimes he call him Muhammad, sometimes he call him Ahmad? What this confusion is about is his name is Muhammad or Ahmad? The fact the Muslim they will say to you it's the same name. Why? It have the same meaning. What is the meaning? The praised one, obviously, Muhammad is a playing God. He changed his name from Atham ibn Abdullah to be Ahmad and Muhammad. Actually, the Muslims. They believe that Muhammad have 99 names the same as Allah. Imagine. He's equal to God. This is why the Muslims, they speak about monotheism, but in fact, they associate the name of Muhammad with the name of Allah in everything they say. If you go and read the flag of ISIS, the flag of ISIS is what? The Shahad is Muhammad and Allah, two names in one line. It is the Muslims who they associate the name of a man with the name of God. Have you ever heard say, a Christian converting to Christianity? Somebody converted to Christianity, he says, uh, uh, like associating many names with God? No, we don't do that. We have one God. How you believe in one God and then you say that I believe that there's no God but Allah and there's no and, and he's a prophet Muhammad. Allah have 124,000 prophets. Why Muhammad? Muhammad is the last prophet where it says and, and why? You see Harun Harun and Musa both are prophets in the Quran. Okay, question. Why Allah He sent Moses and Harun in the same family as a prophet? 
I mean, why there was a lot of prophets in the same time, and suddenly Allah decided not to send any prophets after Muhammad. What happened? Strike. They say to you that the Quran says that Muhammad is the last prophet. Where it says that? It says here. Read with me. Are you stupid or what? Here we go. Let me show you the verse. The verse doesn't say that. ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولا ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين. Alright, they say to you, here it says that Muhammad was not the father of any of of your men. Why is that? Muhammad have tons of wives. Muhammad he claimed that Allah he sent him a dish of shish kebab to have a lot of sex. He got the power of 40 men. All those 40 men power, he could not have a baby. Actually, behind this, there is some, some mystery. Muhammad was not the father of any of your children. But he is the messenger of Allah. And he is the seal of the prophet. This is how the Muslim translate this verse. Let us read translation. You see, he is the seal of the seal of the prophets, but that doesn't say he is the last prophet. He is the seal of the prophet, you idiot. Mean that he is the one who agreed with all the prophets before him. Nowhere it says that he is the last messenger. Seal, you idiot, is in Arabic coming as a khatim. Khatim is a ring. This is what Khatim means, ring. In the old days, they have a seal, which is a ring. When they finish making a letter, he stamp the wax with his ring. This is his signature. So he is the seal of the prophets. What does that mean? He agreed with all the prophets who came from Allah before him. The Muslim, they translate this as, or to explain this verse as, he is the last prophet. And this is why I say always that Muslims are disconnected with their Quran and their religion. Everything in this book is funny and stupid. How many days Allah created the earth? Is it six days? I want to go back to the six days because we did not cover this issue with this guy who made fun of the Bible speaking about the Bible speaking that God created the earth in six days, which is equal to 6,000 years. You know, for me, uh, uh, you can take always uh, the words in the Bible in literate way. Or if you want to, you know, you, you don't want to do that, don't do that. It's up to you. But for me, I believe the Bible is accurate about the creation of the earth. And when the Bible speak about that one day is equal to 1,000 years, sorry, 1,000 years for us is equal to one day for God. This is a this is a prophet speaking about that time mean nothing to God. It's not really about a day. Six thousand year or even 24 hours. And for me, I don't really care because at the end of the day, I believe that all the description. It was to to make to make the creation of God simple. Imagine if God want to write for us a book about the creation of the fly. There's thousands of pages to be written. Those who study the eye, as an example, of a human being, they have to study tons of books before they can open an eye clinic, just about the eye. So imagine if God want to write for us a books about his creation and we have thousands if not millions of creations around us and it's very complicated the creation the human alone how many books god he will write for us to explain to us how he created us the nerves the vein the eyes the you know i mean it's amazing so the creation story it is to make it simple it's not really meant to give details that god created man man disobey god god provide him everything the man, because he's a greedy, still he don't, he's not happy, he's not satisfied. As simple as that. Otherwise, if we want to go in details, God, he will provide us endless numbers of books. 
the earth was not created just like this i mean it's very complicated planet the the the, the universe the globe the 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 galaxies it's amazing we are just a little tiny dust in the in the in the universe and this dust the space of dust is full of creatures so imagine how much complication we have but as long as the muslims make fun of the bible speaking about the six days of creation and they say the bible says it is six thousand years but the quran says that abdul let us go just to show you that the muslims they have no idea and they are not connected with their book Let us see. يدبر الأمر من السماء إلى الأرض ثم يؤرج إليه في يوم كان مقداره ألف سنة مما تعدون. What does that mean? Translation, chapter twenty-two, verse number five. Here it's making it clear that the day for Allah. is 1000 year of your timing if this verse is not enough to prove it to you we go to the front verse let us continue oh, hold on Yeah, this is the same one. Eh. For some reason, the search engine is not working. If you read here, Uh, this uh, it show us things we don't want. Yeah, and actually, this guy he made fun of the Bible speaking about Noah. Uh, he lived for long in the Bible. Look what the Quran says about the age of Noah, chapter nine, twenty-nine, verse number fourteen. It says the following. You see, they make fun of the Bible, but they don't know what's written in their books. They are idiots. We uh, we once sent Noah to his people, and he etc. Okay, uh, okay. He he lived and he he lived between them for a thousand years, less fifty. Do you see it? So they make fun of the Christians about what's written about the Bible, about the age of people, how long they live, but they don't know what is written in their Quran because they are idiots. Every Muslim. He is a walking idiot. He don't, they don't know what is written in their books. They make fun of your book when they have in the same same what they have in the it, it, the Quran is a theft of what is written. Chapter thirty two, verse number five. We show it to you uh, here. Chapter seventy, verse number four. The Muslim they say this verse is about that in the judgment day, the day will be equal to fifty thousand years. But that will not make sense. The angels and the spirit ascend to him in the day the measure were for as a 50,000 years. But according to Muhammad, that the distance between uh, uh, the earth and the heaven is going to uh, the, the uh, Allah and us is going to be closer because Allah is going to warp the, the, the ground or the earth by his hand. So how is how the distance is increasing in the in the in the time of the judgment day? It doesn't make sense. The earth will be almost in the hand of Allah and then he will grab it by his hand. So why is taking them 50,000 years in the judgment day to go to heaven and before it take them 1,000 years? Uh, if we go here... Lord have mercy. Mm. 
<clears throat> yeah, I, need, I think I need to try to find different website, which is easier to find. Anyway, so if we go in the in the hadith to make it simple for the Abdul who's making fun of the Bible, the Muslim they say to you, the Bible make it clear that the sun set and the sun rise, or they say it was night, it was day. Allah, you know, God he called, he said this, and Allah he said this. So they are saying the Quran is not saying the same as the Bible. The fact we will get them busted as we see here. Uh, Muhammad he said. I remember carefully, Muhammad is the one who said that. I hope the Muslims who are making fun of the Bible will read carefully with us. The Messenger of Allah said, who is the one talking? The Messenger of Allah. Show respect, please, Mr. Muhammad. Uh, and he is the one who tell the truth, Muhammad. Remember that. Allah the exalted the created the earth in Saturday and the mountains in Sunday and the trees on Monday and things entirely in labor on Tuesday, light in Wednesday. And remember, the Muslim they made fun of the Bible says <laughs> the Bible says that God created sun in Wednesday. Are you stupid Christians? You see, if, if you go and watch the that, the that himself, who the Muslims worship and they think he's a big shot. This idiot, he do not know that his prophet said that too. So when the dad and Zechariah making fun of the Bible for God saying that he created the sun in Wednesday, as they say, why didn't make fun of their prophet? Because automatically you are making fun of your prophet. But this is what happened. When the dad he debate, he debate people who do not know Islam. If the dad was debating me, I would say, are you sure this is stupid? He would say, yes. I said, thank you very much. You just admitted that your prophet is stupid too. He would say to me, why? Why you say so? This is your prophet saying that. You're a prophet saying that the first thing Allah created, it was the earth. Actually, it doesn't say the earth, by the way. In Arabic, it says, At-Turba, the sand, in Saturday. And the mountains in Sunday. وَخَلَقَ الشَّجَرَ يَوْمَ الْإِثْنَيْنَ وَخَلَقَ الْمَكْرُوهُ يَوْمَ الثَّلَاثَاءَ Etc. So the first thing he created, it was the sand on Saturday, then the mountains on Sunday, and then the trees on Monday, and then the evil in, in Tuesday, and the light in Wednesday, and he spread the animals of all kind in, in Thursday, and he created Adam in the afternoon on Friday. Are you telling me the Muslims, you know, uh, they lie, they say to us, oh, the Quran, when the Quran says uh, six days, it means six periods. Six periods, don't you see? It says Monday, Sunday, Saturday, and it says a Friday afternoon. He created Adam. Why did why they lie? You see, me as a believer, as a believer, there is things the science cannot explain to me. As an example, when the Christians believe that Mary was a virgin, I mean science. There's no point of that. I mean, well, science, according to science, women, she cannot get pregnant by herself. As simple as that. So either you're a believer or you believe in the science. The Muslims, they never made fun of Mary being virgin. Why? Because it's mentioned in the Quran. If the Quran never mentioned that Mary was virgin, the Muslim will be making fun of you day and night. They will humiliate you. You see the hypocrisy of this cult? Just because their prophet said Mary was virgin, no Muslim make fun of it. But does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. I mean, why Why Mary was virgin? Who, who want to tell me why? What? What is the purpose of Mary being virgin for Islam? Nothing. For the Christians, we know why. Because Jesus is the son of no man. For he is coming from above. For he is God in the flesh. That makes sense. But in Islam, why, why Mary she gave a birth for a son who is not a son of any man they can't explain because simply is a theft and because muhammad is a thief whatever the thief he said the muslims agree and nobody complain about it but no muslim can explain to us why mary was virgin they make fun of your bible but what is they are making fun of as you see in the front of your eyes is mentioned by their prophet
According to Muhammad, he created, Allah created the sun in one day. But this is a contradiction for the Quran. And by the way, the Quran contradicts the Quran about that. As an example, which one Allah created first? The sun or the dust? If we go here as an example, <coughs> in this verse, I know that the topic became complicated, but guys, the more we learn, you know, this is what, uh, like, I mean, knowledge come. We talk about things and more information come. It's like a, a flow of information, which is good. Here in this chapter in front of us, chapter 41, verse, read from verse number 9, 11, 10, 11, etc. Read them. It says here that uh, the last thing Allah, he created, it was the sky. The sky was a smoke. Read carefully. Say is that that ye deny him who created the earth in two days? So look what the Quran says. The Quran claimed that Allah created the earth in two days, but Muhammad he said that he created the earth in Saturday. <laughs> Do you see it? Now look, hold on. The Muslim they will say to you, no, 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 no. He said he created the earth in Saturday and mountains in Sunday. Okay, I will let it go. What about the trees? What about the evil? What about the animals? Let us continue reading. So he created the earth in two days. All right. And then he set on earth mountains standing firm. According to Islam, mountains, Allah, he placed it on the earth. This is stupid. Mountains are not something to place. It's coming from inside the magma. Mountains is not a foreign object. We place it in the top of the earth. So, according to the Quran, Allah, he set the earth, and the, on the earth, mountains standing firm. And that was in four days. And he created all things in four days. So now we have two days here, four days here, this is six days. And then, here translation is a lie. It says, moreover, it doesn't say that. Verse number 11, it's a lie. If you change the translator, you will see, it says clearly, that not moreover and after that after that or then he went to the heaven then he turned to the heaven you see so after he finished the earth all the earth then he went to the heaven and at that point the heaven was a smoke the heaven was a smoke do you see it which means there's no sun so now six days went by, and yet there is no sun, according to this chapter. If we go to the front verse, you will see the contradiction immediately. Read carefully with me. In chapter 2, verse number 29, it says, This verse confirmed the verse we read. This verse confirmed it. It says that Allah, he created everything in the earth first. Everything first. Which means before even he created the sky. It is he who created for you all things that on earth. And then he went to the sky and he made them seven. Okay, let us continue. Different verse. Oh boy. No, hold on, hold on. We go to this chapter here, which is one of the funniest, chapter 79, verse number 30. It says the following, and you can read any translation you wish. Look how the order of creation changed. Read carefully. According to this verse, Allah created the heaven first. 
and he finished the heaven first remember this is a chapter 79 let's go back chapter 79 and you can read a few verses after a few verses before so if we go to Yusuf Ali translation read carefully with me what are ye more difficult to create or the heaven above so starting here is a creation of the heaven then on high ha had he raised its canopy and he has given it order in perfection so now the heaven is created first and he gave us perfection and then he made the night the night and the darkness which is very stupid because darkness is not 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 does not need to be created and then after that you see here it says moreover it's false it doesn't say moreover it says and after that change the translation you will see how the translator he play games and after that do you see it so based on chapter 79 the sky was completed everything in the sky is completed and after that Allah start working in the earth Read carefully. I mean, just to print the two two pages, two chapters, chapter seventy nine and chapter forty one. Print them and make the papers next to each other. Here it says that Allah He created the the heaven first. He finished the heaven. He make it perfect. He gave it the dark and the light, and then the earth. He expanded after that. Actually, expanded here is about making it flat, and then He brought forth the water. So the water came after the sun and the light. And the mountain he made it firm and that's mean the mountains came after the sun and the light and the stars but this is total contradiction for what is written here in the other chapter it was the opposite it was the earth in two days and then the mountains he placed it firm and whatever substance in the top of it in four days and then after that then he turned to the heaven and he it was a smoke which means there's nothing and then after that he made light Read carefully with me. Then he ordered them seven heaven in two days, etc., etc. Okay, and then he says, uh, and then he uh, uh, he made all the order, the the like uh, the measuring, etc. And he made the darkness and the night, and he finished everything. So it is a total contradiction. Where is the make sense book, and where is the book of confusion free? I can keep going and give you endless numbers of confusion. We started from page number one, and we can go to page number. What about to go to the last page in the Quran? I mean, because there's no different. You see, this book, the Quran, if you start reading from the last page or the first page, there's no difference because there's no connection between the chapter. And I showed you an example. If you go in the Quran as an example here. If we go here, where it says, Today I complete your religion for you. This is chapter 5, verse number 3, and we mentioned it before. When, when the author of the Quran, he said, Today, I completed your religion for you this day. I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you. This verse, in order to be clear and good, it has to be the last verse in the Quran. It's like, you know, me, if you read my books, I say, thank you guys for reading my book. Don't forget to read value number two, make film, make, make sense. Or like, let's say you're making a film. You, you say value number one, uh, uh, part number one, part number two. It makes sense. But here, this day, I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you this day. But this is a chapter 3, verse number 7. Chapter 7, verse number, number 3. What do you mean this day? Who inserted this verse there? This verse, in order to make sense, and only to make sense, it's going to be the last verse in the Quran. Otherwise, based on this verse, Everything after this verse now, all the chapters after are fabrication. 
because today is the religion of Islam completely perfected. That that's it. We do not need all of this Quran. What for? Who need it? Nobody. All of this is a, is fake. If you just told me that today I perfected the religion for you, why you are giving me the rest of the Quran then? This day, you see, he is not making just a statement about like uh, uh, just teaching. This day, have I perfected your religion for you, completed my favor. The favor of Allah is completed. How in the world this happened? And why it's complete? Because he said to us, don't eat pork. This is stupid. What eating pork have to do with completing religion? Is the religion of Islam is just about not to eat pork? And that's it, it's completed? And by the way, the same verse in the front of us here says that you can eat pork. Yes, it says that. It says at the end of the day, if you are hungry, you can eat all those things. <laughs> so I, I forbid you from eating this and this and this and this and this. But if you are hungry, you can eat everything, which means all the Muslims believe that is haram and halal is a joke. You can eat anything you want. So when somebody tried to present me Islam that it is religion, have rules. It's Muhammad was trying to make rules, trying to copy the Jews. The Jews, he noticed the Jews don't eat pork. Okay, we don't eat pork. But he could not follow the Jews perfectly because simply it's going to be hard. The Arab, they like to eat meat, camel. They like to, they, they don't have many choices. The Jews are farmers. They grow, they are smart people. They have farms. During the time of Muhammad, Al Medina, which is Yathrib, Muhammad, he stole it. He killed the Jews. He took the city, was a big farm. Even the hadith books speaking about how many trees the Jews have. Why the Jews have a lot of trees? Because they are smart. If you go right now in Israel, and you cross the border to Egypt, you will see Egypt is total desert, Israel as if it is heaven. Why? Because they knew how to plant in the desert. They are smart people. You cross the street from, from Israel to Gaza, you will find yourself like as if you are crossing to different galaxy. Why? You see that the, the Israeli are a small population. Small, tiny population. We can't even compare them to the Muslims. We are talking about six millions. Two millions of, of Israel are Arab, which means the left is four millions. Those all are those who make Israel. So why that the four millions, they can do what a, a billion cannot do? Very simple, because, you know, the problem is not the land. The problem is the people. This cult, this religion, if you take it, if you take Islam to heaven, heaven will become garbage. You will see candy cans, garbage, everybody and everywhere in the street. You know, if you go right now to any Islamic countries, like I saw some of you are, uh, are excited about Dubai. Dubai is clean because the one who take care of Dubai is the foreigners. The total number of Muslims in Dubai is not even 2%. This is the truth. The majority are non-Muslims. And this is why Dubai is Dubai today. Everything done in Dubai is not by the people of Dubai. Bridge companies, Canadian companies, American companies, Indian companies, you name it. Where is the people of Emirates? You don't even you walk in the street, you don't find them. Until now, a huge number of the majority of the population in Saudi Arabia do not know how to read, how to write. What is the last discovery made by, if we can call Islamic countries as an example? The Iranians are so proud about their weapon. They say they have weapon, but 99% of it is Russian uh, uh, parts. They bring parts, they put it together in Iran by, by the hired Russian technicians and yet they claim that this is an Iranian missiles 
until now, America itself buying technology from Israel. Every computer chip you have, the chip is made in Israel. Every microwave. This is small, tiny country. The first people who made nuclear bombs, they were Jews. This is the truth. What is the last phone made by Muslims? Anybody tell me? I saw an article, a Muslim, he's saying that uh, what his name, the owner of Apple, is a Muslim. This guy, he is a son of a Syrian guy. He never been a Muslim. He make fun of, oh, he don't care for religion. He grew in a house which is a Christian house. And he was adopted by a Christian family. And nothing in his death and nothing in his life and nothing in his marriage have to do with Islam. But now because they are desperate to find something that to be, you know, why we cannot find something good in this religion? We cannot find something good about Muhammad. We cannot be proud about Muhammad. He was a child molester. So what we would do? We claim that Shakespeare was Muslim. I mean, how do you, can you believe that Shakespeare was a Muslim? Yes, this is what they say. Bernard Cho, he said articles about the Prophet. They make lies because they are desperate. The same now we see those articles in the internet trying to fool you, saying to you the Quran is a clear book. What is it clear about the Quran? What is clear in the message of God who, who says to me, if you pray to me five day, five times a day, I'm going to give you a lot of women and their legs will be wide open. I mean, aren't, aren't you, are you stupid or what? Forget about everything. Forget about contradiction of science. Forget about the stupidity of Muhammad. Forget about everything. What kind of religion? Promise me if I pray to God five times, will give me endless number of women have no panties. And not only that, Allah will make them virgin each time I have sex with them. I mean, is that really a religion? Are you convinced now? What about God? He promised me little boys to be my slaves for eternity in heaven. Is that the ethic? Is that religion? Is that God? In the heaven, I will be sitting on my sofa and little boys will be serving me and they will be going around me and those boys are naked and so sexy what is that this is disgusting this is literally disgusting if you are searching for god search for a true god this is god this is vagina vendor this is vagina vendor this is pimp this is a this is how you know what they call it whorehouse this is not heaven And look here, they put for you between two brackets, handsome. Are you worried about their looking? <laughs> what handsome? I will have handsome. They are male servants. They are boys. And why they are young male? I mean, what is that? Allah, cannot you make for us a computer? Eh? Uh, this computer will not be human. It's a machine. What young male? It says a uh, man. Young boys. And those are like pearls. Why? Because this cult with whiteness, they don't like black people. It's as simple as that. They have obsession with white skin. So in the heaven, I will have women who I can see through their bones. Look like we have difficulty in the broadcast. I don't know. What's wrong with people? You know, when I choose something to believe in, a reason to believe, and I cannot find them to believe in any... Is my broadcast, guys, is keep coming? Uh, I just see, I don't know what's happening here. I hope I did not lose connection. I'm not sure. Hmm. 
Maybe I lost connection. All right, guys, I hope uh, my voice still coming. I apologize, there there's was a difficulty. Uh, uh, anyway, I think we have enough for today. It looked like my internet went off for a little bit and I had to restart my, uh, my modem in order to fix it here. So I wanna say thank you for listening and I hope uh, maybe in two days from now we will do another podcast. I will announce about it when it's ready. But just to make it simple, any religion, Always take the end of it from the reward. If the reward is about sex, if the end is about sex, what is the beginning? If the reward is about little boys in my lap, little boys to serve me for eternity, and they are naked and they are handsome and they are white, women who they are made for sex, what kind of cult this cult is? What kind of God he promised me such a promise? The gift of a person speak of him if you come to my house and you have a book to teach me about mathematics obviously you like mathematics if you come to my house and you have uh, flowers in your hand obviously you love a flower if you come to my house and you have 80,000 servant who they are naked boys and 80,000 female who they are naked I can see their bones obviously you are a sex addicted God the Muslim, they say to you, Allah, he promised people what they like. That is a stupid answer because obviously this is what he like. For God can make us like things higher than sex. He is the one who created sex, but the, the creation of sex was exist to make a family, to grow in number, to populate sex in heaven for what? Pleasure of sex was for a reason. If a human being, he don't have a pleasure for sex, he will not have sex. 
and then he will not have babies and then mankind will disappear sex was not created for the purpose of sex it was for the creation or reproduction but because this cult is all about sexuality and have nothing inside nothing real it end in such a way so i don't know if my broadcast right now is working or not i want to stop in here i want to say thank you guys for being here may the lord bless you until we see you again christ is lord islam is false i mean to that see you soon again bye, -bye.